What's up y'all, I'm Daniel and this is JD Studios unboxing show and tell of third scale hyper real movie statue Wonder Woman 1984. I'm so happy to finally be able to show y'all the final outcome of Jandy's second character. It's been a long time coming, and many have given their all to bring you the finest quality that we have here today. Before we begin, I just want to remind y'all that nobody's really out there that has the process like ours to create hyper real statues at this scale. Um, all the companies in the market are competing to showcase the best possible quality, and this is a great thing for our collectors because it elevates everyone's games. But we see online different products being compared to ours, and that's fine. Uh, we're happy that JD is setting some sort of a standard, but I think that the right comparison can only be done with products that are of the same scale and materials. Otherwise, it doesn't really hold up. Uh, for example, we root the hair one by one. Some other may use adhesives. The two methods cannot be compared considering the effort, the time, and the cost it takes to root, not to mention the quality it produces. As you know, we create third-scale hyperreal statues that use silicone, glass eye, and rooted hair to produce a look that brings it as close as possible to the real thing. Comparing j &D products to one-to-one -one scale silicone or third-scale resin products isn't right, you know? Anyway, let's move on. Here's the outer box. Unlike JD's Arthur Fleck, Wonder Woman has a few parts that need to be assembled. So with this, we thought we could decrease the size of the box. And we tried, but in the end, we had to keep it the same as Arthur Fleck in order to keep each part secure from damage. Let's open it up and find out what's inside. Inside the outer box is the JD Concept art box designed with two themes, simplicity and luxury. Uh, we didn't want it to be complicated, yet it had to have that look that there's something valuable inside. Hence, it's simple and luxurious. And you can probably guess that this is the same gold that reminds you of the Golden Eagle armor of Wonder Woman. Now, the form of the outer packaging box itself is the same as that of j and Arthur Fleck, and you are able to remove the cover with ease, like so. Oh. We will proceed to remove the Velcro straps. Remove the outer cover, like so. Now the inner layers will look different from its predecessor. We worked on improving the inner parts of the box to be even more secure than before. For Jandy Arthur Fleck, there was a suede finish to the plastic holder of the statue, but the plastic holder wasn't able to bear the weight of the base and in some cases, ended up causing minor scratches on the base. So this time, we got rid of the plastic. For the parts that need assembly, we packaged them separately in order to avoid any kind of damage. Another big reason why we decided to go with assembled parts is because for Arthur Fleck, uh, there were instances where an ankle was damaged during inspection at Border Customs. Uh, because we couldn't help replace just the broken parts, we had trouble providing better customer service. This time, we will be able to provide better service due to the fact that parts are easier to replace if unfortunate events should occur. Hopefully not. I am going to remove the top layer of the packaging. And in the second layer is the base. Here, as you can see, as you saw in, uh, in our first product, here's the Wonder Woman 1984 title. You've got your edition number. Uh, you've got our logos. The weight of the base was reduced from about nine kilograms or 20 pounds to roughly five kilograms or 11 pounds. Uh, we made a few changes in the construction method and material to achieve this. Combined with the body, the base comes out as seven kilograms or 15.5 pounds. And this is a weight that any display case will be able to hold up, no problem. Now the top of the base, or the floor that Wonder Woman stands on, is actually cultured marble. And it looks fantastic. I love how we made this part of the base. Now I will proceed to 
the body. Here is the head and body of Wonder Woman. We have the left leg, I believe. We have really strong magnets that you're able to attach her leg to her body. And here is her other leg. And here's the keyhole. The key that goes into the hole right here. Boom. And there's a magnet on the floor of the base that will attach her foot to the floor just like this. We've got some parts to the armor. Um, this is a shoulder part. You're able to see the letter L, which is her left shoulder armor plate. Over here in the first layer of the packaging, we got this, the right shoulder plate. Again, attached with magnets. All right, so that's it for the first layer of packaging. In the second layer, we have her chest piece to her armor. And there's a back piece. Um, now I'm gonna talk about the hair. Uh, you do want to be real careful, so you want to uh, make sure the top of the hair is kind of lying flat, okay? If you, even when you're assembling, you want to make sure um, that you're not handling the hair too roughly, okay? One suggestion I'd like to add, you're gonna see some spaces in between uh, the front part of her hair and the back. When you do, carefully take some strands and try to fill up the hole, fill up the space in between that you can see through um, and you can even try to fit the strands in between this chest plate, chest blade, and her shoulder blade, or the shoulder piece. And try to fit it in there and hold it so that the, the hair would hold in place. And there will be no space showing, and that makes the hair look full and look really good. Now we thought about packaging the head separately, but that would cause issues with the bottom curls in the hair and the packaging would get even bigger so we opted to leave the head attached to the body and just packaged it even more securely for arthur fleck i know there were instances where the hairstyle changed a little during transport we do our best so that the hair remains in place but some changes are just unavoidable and you have to tinker with it a little bit here and there uh, it's not hard to do especially because it, it is set in place pretty hard uh, with hair products you won't have to worry about the curls straightening out or anything like that. It'll need just a little tidying up, if at all. Now I will proceed to uh, add on the final piece, which is Wonder Woman's whip. Uh, the whip is placed in a plastic bag in the, the last layer of the packaging. There's a whip holder, and then at the, at the end of the whip holder is a magnet. And on this part, right here, this part of the armor, Above her, you know, right hip is another magnet. All you got to do is find it and boom, it sticks in place. And this is how you finish the assembly. Compared to the prototype, personally, I have no complaints. It looks awesome. And one thing I can say for sure is that through another round of production, this time with Wonder Woman, JND has had another growth spurt in terms of skills and capacity, especially with the hair team. Our hair team is like uh, a hair salon where hair designers are working on each head like the real thing uh, in the real place, you know? I know y'all would be happy with what we were able to do here. The next step in the process for this product is quality control before delivery. All the heads have already been checked for quality in Korea. And as for the rest of the parts coming in from China, we're going to look through one by one and filter out anything that doesn't meet our standards. Uh, we know that there's no such thing as absolute perfection, but at least we can strive for it. That's one thing I can promise y'all. JND will strive for perfection. And we are detail, you know what it is. Thanks for watching. 
This has been JD Studios unboxing show and tell of third scale hyper real movie statue Wonder Woman 1984.